Next, we will look at the other way around that is converting a decimal number to a non-decimal. Now, the textbook way over here is a little uh, um, calculation intensive. Uh, we will see a logical way also in a while. But first, let's convert 314.58 of the decimal system into an octal. The integral part will be handled separately and the decimal part separately. So in the integral part, we take 314 and we divide it by 8, the base that we want to convert it. And remember, we are going to write it in this form. That is, we are going to write the quotient below it. Okay. And isolate the remainders. So, 8 uh, 4s are won't go, 8 3s are 24, and 74 carry, 7 carrier, 8 9s are 72. So, there's a remainder of 2, write it to the right. Again, okay, something fell on, check it. Again, divided by uh, 8. Keep dividing by 8 till the time it is not divisible further. That is, you get a number less than 8. 8 uh, 4s are 32. So, 32 will leave a remainder of 7. Now, either stop at this time or say till the quotient becomes 0. 8, 0. It's not divisible. 0 and then the remainder is 4. And the... Uh, conversion is you'll have to list the remainders in the reverse order. So the integral part, uh, the conversion of it is 472. Right? You have to write it in the reverse order. Right? That's why I said the textbook way is a little mechanical, laborious, calculation intensive. We'll see a very nice logical way. Yeah? So let's just wind this very quickly. In fact, if you notice, what are we? We are talking about the remainders. Now, when I divide by 8, do you notice that the remainders will always be less than 8? So, when you're converting that number, you'll never get a digit 8 or more. You'll always get less than 8. And that is obviously expected because in base 8, you won't have a digit 8 or higher. Now, for the decimal part. Now, the decimal part is interesting and quite a few... Even those who have learned base system in their earlier college school days do not remember that, right? Or do not know that. It's the analogous year. Here we have divided it and isolated the remainder. Here we will multiply the decimal part with an 8. And we will isolate the integral part. So 8 is a 64. Uh, 6 carry over, 8 fives are 40, 46, 4.64. So now leave the 4 aside for a minute, the integral part. Yeah, just focus on the integral part. Chuck the integral part, take the only the decimal part and multiply it with 8 again. Okay, so 8 fours are 32. 3 carry over, 48 and 351, you should have known this multiplication anyways. Chuck the integral part, take the decimal part and multiply it again. And this process can continue indefinitely. You need to decide till how many decimal digits do you want. Okay, so what is the decimal part? The decimal part is going to be the integral values in the correct order. That is from the first one. So the decimal part will read as 0.4. You need one more, 0.5. I need one more digit. Take the integral part, multiply it by 8. Watch out this step. Nice one. 8 12 is a 96. So this is a 0.96. Now the zero will be a part of that answer. Just because the integral part is, there's no integer doesn't mean ignore it. There's going to be a zero 
in that part and I'll be left with a 0.96 just for purpose to explain it that this process can continue and it may also stop in certain example we'll do one example after this where it stops but let me just get one more digit here 8 6 are 48 4 carry over 72 and 4 is 76 7 so I've got a 7 and this would continue as I said this is going to be the octal equivalent of 314.58 if i just need to add one sentence here we are going to multiply a decimal part with eight so the product has to definitely be less than eight right so the integral part here will never be eight look here 0.96 is as close to one but it will still be a decimal part, right? So the answer will be less than 8. It's close to 8, but less than 8. So I can get a 7, but I'll never get a digit which is going to be more than 7. Yeah, which is again as expected. Okay, the base that I've been in use uh, are the ones that I've talked till now. Binary, octal, hexadecimal. Uh, but then theoretically the base could be anything. So here in this question, I need to convert the decimal number into a base 5. Okay. Uh, so let's, it's just a repetition. So I'll just do it very quickly. Divide by 5, 5 ones are 5, 23 fours are 20, remainder of 3, divide by 5, 5 twos are 10. This is a quotient, mind you, right? Yeah, the remainder is going to be to the right. And again, when you divide, you get zero, the remainder is two. So the integral part is the remainders in reverse order, 243. And for the decimal part, take the decimal 0 0.84, multiply it with the five. Okay, so when I multiply it with the five, I get a 22, 42, 4.2. So that 4 will be the first decimal place. Just take the decimal part 0 0.20 into 5 and when I do 0 0.20 into 5, I'll get a number 1. So the integral part is 1 and there is no other decimal. There's no decimal part. The answer that I've got is an integer. So the process stops. As I said, it, kept, it could also stop. So this is not a recurring number. This is just, it's not a non-terminating number, right? It would just stop at uh, 243.41. We'll convert 105 of decimal to a binary number. And so the process is start dividing by 252. Remainder 1 divide by 226. Remainder 0. Divide by 2 13 times. Remainder 0. Divide by 2 6 times. So the remainder 1, when you divide by 2, 2 3s are 6, remainder 0. Divide by 2, 2 1s are 2, remainder 1. Stop, go in the reverse order, right? So starting from this 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now I'll leave this on the board because hereafter we'll do a logical way of how do we do this conversion.